Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a rational, exponential, whatever expression with complex numbers and some imaginary numbers too, right? So we're going to be using um, a properties of exponents or exponentiation or I should probably say complex exponentiation. We're going to define what it is and then we're going to use the natural log and then we're going to get into a lot of interesting stuff, very complex stuff. And then, of course, I'll be presenting two methods whenever it's available. Okay, so let's start with the first method. And to get started, I want to show you the definition. Now, what does Z to the W mean when Z and W are both complex numbers? I'm pretty sure you know what 3 to the second power is. It's just 3 times 3 or negative 1 to the power 0, right? You all know these things or negative powers, whatever. They have a certain meaning, which is pretty easy to interpret. But with the complex numbers, like whenever you have something, something like i to the power i, or 1 plus i to the power 1 minus i. It's not kind of crazy. How could you write 1 plus i, 1 minus i times and multiply? No, no, no. We're not talking about writing something this many times. It's different, okay? So we're going to use the exponential function. z to w can be written as e to the power w ln z. Make sense? Okay. This is kind of like if you bring the exponent back here and use the definition of e to the ln x equals x, you should get the same thing. So that's how you can check. So let's go ahead and apply this property to two numbers because we have two numbers, 1 plus i to the 2i and 2i to the power 1 plus i. By the way, have you noticed that the base and the exponent are switched around, but they are not just random. Let me not uh, give it away at this point. If you know it, don't give it away either. Let's go ahead and find out. So we're going to go ahead and follow this definition. And this is going to give us, it should, e to the power 2i times ln 1 plus i. And then I'm not going to write the multiplication sign, but I'll use uh, put the argument of the ln function in parentheses. Hopefully, that'll help you. e to the power 1 plus i times ln 2i. Get the idea? Now. We are dividing two powers of e, right? So, as you should know, exponential x to divide by exponential y should be exponential x minus y. You could also write this as exp for exponential, but this method or this notation is obviously shorter. So, from here, by way of subtraction of exponent, we get the following. e to the power 2i ln 1 plus i minus 1 plus i times ln 2. I know that looks complicated or maybe a little complex, but don't worry. We're going to go ahead and focus on the exponent first, and now we're going to simplify this, okay? So let's go ahead and focus on what's in the exponent. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the natural log of a complex number. Now, in the real world, you cannot ln a negative number. You can't ln 0. You can't even ln 0 in the complex world anyways. So it's forbidden. But in the complex world, you can ln negative numbers. You can even ln numbers that are imaginary or complex, like ln 1 plus i is defined. And we're going to talk about it. So the definition for the natural log of a complex number z is ln z equals ln absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. In other words, if z can be written as r e to the i theta, thanks to Euler, then ln z is just going to be ln r plus i times theta. Of course, I'm talking about the principal values here because we can definitely add multiples of 2 pi to theta to get different angles. But let's just focus on this now because in my expressions, I'm always going to add multiples of 2 pi and then we're going to simplify our work. Okay? So notice that ln r is a real valued log, but ln z isn't. That's why we have this additional i theta, which is the imaginary part. I just couldn't remember the right term for it. So, in other words, ln of a complex number is just another complex number. Okay, makes sense? So, in other words, if let's say we have ln a plus b i, it could be written as x plus y i. I don't know if this is helpful, but that's what it is. So, try to keep it simple and look at the big picture. So, let's go ahead and evaluate these by using this definition of the 
log of a complex number, okay? 2i multiplied by. Now, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with ln r plus i theta. So that's going to look as follows. ln square root of 2 plus i times pi over 4. But I'm not going to settle for the principal value. I'm going to also add multiple of 2 pi. And I know that's gonna things uh, that's gonna make things look more complicated, but don't worry about it. And the other number, which is ln of two i, is gonna be ln two, which is the ln of the modulus plus i times pi over two. But again, I'm gonna add two pi k to consider all possible solutions, which are infinitely many, right? If you go ahead and distribute this whole thing, let me tell you what it's gonna look like. Okay, you're gonna get i ln two minus pi over two minus 4 pi n, minus ln 2, if I didn't make any mistakes, minus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And I think I should probably, you know what, I should give you the final answer because I think I simplified it. So this should be the following. So what happens is, for example, ln root 2 can be written as 1 half of ln 2 and 1 half and 2 are going to cancel out. So that's going to leave us with i ln 2. And there's another i ln 2 that comes from here, but that's with the minus sign. So they're going to cancel out, leaving us with the simplest answer. Okay, so that should be a 4 pi n minus ln 2 minus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Still uh, quite complicated, and this is just the exponent. What is the exponent? I mean this part, right? We're only dealing with this one because once we simplify it, we're going to do e to the power of that. Make sense? So this is the part that's the exponent, but how can I simplify it? Uh, well, I don't think you can that much because these can be combined and maybe you can use a different integer for this. But here's the problem. This is still complicated. So let's go ahead and simplify this, shall we? Set k and n both equal to zero so we can kind of deal with the principal values because they're going to be fairly simple. And of course, this is going to be zero too. So now we're going to get negative ln 2 minus i times pi over 2. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and do e to the power of that number. And let's see what that's going to give us. Obviously, you can separate this into e to the negative ln 2 times e to the negative i pi over 2. So at this point, you got to remember Euler's formula, the polar form. This can be written as 1 over e to the ln 2. And e to the ln 2 is just 2, so this is 1 half. And as you know, on the argand plane, this negative pi over 2 represents negative i. So this is kind of going to be negative i. By the way, negative i can be represented in infinitely many ways using different you know, arguments, branches, branch cuts, whatever. But whenever you have something like e to the i theta, when you know the theta, there's only one value. It's unique. Does that make sense? You see the difference? Okay. So now we got what? This is 2. That's 1 half. Negative i times 1 half is negative i over 2. Wow, fairly simple, right? When n and k are 0. It's a perfect world. Now, let's see how we can arrive at something like this with the second method because I think the second method is awesome, as always. Okay, so here's what we have. 1 plus i to the power 2i and then 2i to the power 1 plus i. Of course, there's going to be some simplifications and you might call this oversimplifying, but we did it with the first method too, so bear with me. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we've done quite a few videos on 1 plus i and 1 minus i. Hopefully, you'll remember this. I can write this as 1 plus i squared and then raise it to the power i because exponents are multiplied. But is this rule always true? That's a good question. So whenever you have z to the a, b, is it always z to the a to the b or z to the b to the a? When a and b are not both integers, does this rule hold? That's a good question. I think it does, at least in this case. And if you think it doesn't, let us know in the comment section, but be nice. Thank you. 1 plus i is 2i when you square it. So it's going to be 2i to the i. And this is 2i to the 1 plus i. And this is beautiful. You know why? Because we have the same base. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? You subtract the exponents. What's i minus 1 minus i? i cancels out. You end up with negative 1. Beautiful. And that just means 1 over 2i. You have to flip the whole thing. Be careful. And 1 over 2i can be simplified. Just multiply by negative i, you're going to get negative i squared is 1, so this is going to give you a 2, negative i over 2, yay, we got the same thing, beautiful. And 
this brings us to the end of this video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.